So we looked at how the PLL can change the system clock. Specifically, we said that we can make the make the system operate at a higher speed or a lower speed by appropriately choosing the values in the device registers associated with the PLL. Now, let's assume uh, let's let's do some uh, calculations. Let's say we did set it at eighty megahertz. If I set it at eighty megahertz, then we know that a single clock, so 80 megahertz tells me that uh, a clock ticks, so if this is a clock, then a single clock tick is going to take 1 over 80 times 10 to the 6 seconds, which is 12.5 nanoseconds. So which means that if I use the cystic counter then, if I use cystic, the cystic counter we know is a 24-bit value. It's going to be decremented by 1. Remember, it's a countdown value. So it decrements by 1 every 12.5 nanoseconds. So if, let's say, I want to um, I want to write a delay routine. Remember the delay routine we wrote uh, in our previous uh, code so far involved um, doing some arbitrary operations. Now we're going to write a cystic, which is a cystic weight, which I'm going to, uh, which I've written here, but I'm going to go over it. But we want to do a cystic weight so that we can wait for precisely the amount of time we need. So let's take a simple example. Let's say I want to wait for, so if I want cystic to wait for 10 milliseconds. So in other words, I call a subroutine called cystic weight and I pass it something and it has to wait for 10 milliseconds, which means what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off the cystic counter and I put some initial value, so my reload value will be some value. This is my this is my current, and this is my reload. And I set the reload value to a certain number, so that what number I set here is going to tell me how long it's going to take for this to count down to zero. So. What should I set so that it's 12 milliseconds? In other words, my count times, because each tick is 12.5 nanoseconds, should be equal to 10 milliseconds. So count now is going to be equal to the 10 divided by 12.5 times, this is a 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the, this comes out there, 10 to the minus plus 9. So this has to be a value which turns out to be around 80, rather 800,000. So this tells me that if I if I set this value to 800,000 and I start letting the counter go, so remember that this starts at 0 to start with, then it does a minus 1. Uh, from 0, it goes to 800,000 because that's a reload value. Counts 800,000 minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and keeps doing it until it hits the value, which is my... my uh, 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 zero again. And when it goes from the one to zero transition, so it's going to go whatever values it did, and when it does that one to zero transition, it's going to set bit 16 of my control register to be equal to one, to say that there was a, an overflow, if you will. So my code will be 
um, based on this this behavior. So what I'm going to do is I let's say I write a subroutine called cystic weight, and let's say I pass this value of eight hundred thousand. So I'm going to call cystic weight, and I pass the value eight hundred thousand to it. So, which means that when I call the subroutine, the delay value is 800,000. Um, I, I initially set my reload value to be delay minus one. That, that's because a zero also has a, has a meaning here. It's not just 800,000 to one, but it counts from 800,000 to zero. I set that value to be, uh, initial reload value to be 800,000 minus one. Um, it's gonna uh, set the initial uh, value to zero, this will set this value to zero. And then, and and the counter starts ticking, and when it's ticking, I'm gonna continuously check, so this is my continuous check for bit 16. So I will keep checking bit 16 to see if it's a, if it's one yet. As long as it's equal to zero, so this is saying as long as it's equal to zero, do nothing and keep checking. So this while loop has no body in it because it's continuously looping and doing nothing, waiting for that bit to become one. When the bit becomes one, it comes out, which means that the time that it takes for this loop, this subroutine to execute will be exactly my 10 milliseconds. But what if I wanted to get my clock to uh, the subroutine to do um, something that we've looked at, which is 0.1 seconds. So maybe I, what I really wanted to do is not 10 milliseconds, but uh, 100 milliseconds, which by the way is 0.1 second. So what should I change? Well, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the subroutine with an extra zero here. Rather than 800,000, I put an extra zero, so it's 8 million, and this will make my clock, my subroutine, wait for 0.1 second. 